Are you concerned about the debt ceiling? What about the banking crisis? In this video, I'm going to talk about these two very things, how they are connected and what that means for you. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Could you imagine a scenario where the US defaults on its debt? Where the US dollar is suddenly not recognized? Just imagine all countries saying no. Is that really possible? Yes, it is. Is it likely? No. And I'm going to show you what's happening here. In a previous video to this, a few days ago, and several times before that, I looked at what's going on with the debt ceiling and I explained specifically, despite all of this talk, Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell, and all the other names suggesting the crisis, the potential crisis of the US not going ahead and increasing the debt. Well, what would that do? And by the way, increasing the debt ceiling, therefore increasing the debt. What would be the impact of that? All of this was pretty obvious. It would be catastrophic and that's for certain. But what was suggested here was that, oh no, they might not increase it. Let's be honest. They are, are of course going to increase it. But what I said was they'll usually do a temporary increase or a temporary suspension and let that ride out for a little while longer. And at the end of the day, they create a 4,000 page bill and then nobody's able to read it. They pass that through. And then of course it's just filled with things that are designed to help out the special interest. That's why they always have these battles. So I'm going to show you something. Check it out. OMB director says short term debt ceiling extension possible. Oh my goodness. It's all a joke. It's a soap opera. We see the same exact patterns over and over. This is just one example. What about this? Wall Street is getting more worried about the debt ceiling. These charts show how much. Analysts have uh, brought forward their expectations for when the US is at risk of breaching its borrowing limit. And of course, nobody really knows. We just had tax season come around. So the US, the government gets all of that tax money in and that kind of you know, pushes it off just a little bit further because they're able to, uh, you know, pay some of their bills on the verge of breaching the debt ceiling. You could see this. The yellow line is the U.S. public debt subject to limit. The black is the statutory debt limit. And so we're, we are right at that moment right now today. And so we will see, um, you know, depending on that specific date to talk about the X date, it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, they're going to extend it. That's just the way it goes. We had previous instances where they, you know, actually started to shut down little pieces and parts of the government. And that, you know, created this, oh no, we're, the whole economy shutting down. This is a national security threat and all that nonsense. We knew that that wasn't the case. But anyway, here it is. You could see X date and you could look at a few other things the build curve investors have historically demanded higher yield on securities that are due to be repaid shortly after the US is seen as running out of borrowing capacity. You could look at treasury bill curve in focus, cash balances and so on. Look, come on. Treasury coffers have fallen below $200 billion. This is the one that I think has much more significance because um, of what's happening with interest rates and so on. We could see that this is important for the government to have, you know, to be flush with cash, just like the strategic petroleum reserve. You want to have that. And now we can see that that has been declining um, basically for about a year now. And so we will see what happens as a result of all this increasing interest rates. Government has their own uh, problems to worry about, right? They have to deal with the fact that they can't pay their own national debt. So they've got an issue and this all links together with the bank crisis. Did you see what happened with SVB? Were you aware? Well, I know that some of the others out there would, would point to one simple fact or another, but what I want to know specifically was SVB was just a hologram, if you will, of what's going on in the wider financial system. And that's really what we need to discuss here. What am I saying about the hologram? Well, 
A hologram is like a smaller representation of the larger, okay, if that makes any sense to you. It's kind of like a copy or a duplicate, but let's say like lower resolution version, okay? So let's say you had the high def version, but then you squeezed that down and emailed it and sent it and copied it. And you know, by the time you get that meme or that image sent to you in your email, especially back in the day, it was always like reduced resolution. That's kind of the way that this hologram works. Now, what's this analogy all about? Well, we're seeing that with the financial companies today where the whole system is rotten. The whole system has a very big problem problem, all predicated on the fact that death can rise forever. Do you not see an issue with that? Do you not see a problem with that? It gets exposed. The stink starts to show up as soon as rates start to go to a reasonable level. That's what happened. That's what happened with SVB. And that's what happened with all of these other companies that we are now seeing the dominoes one after the other falling. Now you look at PacWest, you look at any of these other ones that I've been covering all, all along. It doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter. As soon as it gets some negative press, then it gets taken down. But what is the reason behind it? It's because of the cycle that we are moving through today. Not to mention all the nonsense on top of that. Short sellers flocking to US banks are risking a painful squeeze. Strategists cite crowded positions, signs of seller exhaustion, some calls emerge for the SEC to impose a ban on short selling. Yeah, because that's the problem, right? The short selling ban is something that I think is, um, I understand what people are saying, but let's be honest here. It's not the short sellers causing the problem. The system is rotten. Regional bank stock index has tumbled amid concerns. It is going down and down and down. And if you look at it on a technical level, it is looking rather bearish, let me tell you. Until this issue is resolved with all of these banks, until we see rates stop, and then the signal, at least the signal that they're going to start cutting rates, we're in this world. We are in this zone. And so these are not something that you would necessarily want to buy up. You could hold your positions. You may not want to sell your positions, but come on, buying the dip right here with, with these, I understand what people are trying to do. And this is a huge mistake. And you got to understand this, okay? You know, the way that I was able to make my money was not from investing like this. The, the most wealthy person that I know specifically, multimillionaire, he didn't make his money in this way. He's a stock trader. He knows everything. He knows exactly how to pinpoint everything. And he has much higher success at teaching people than anybody I've ever seen, really. Um, and so the way that he made his fortune was not, you know, in his stock portfolio. That's not the way he did it. He did it in business, okay? And by the way, completely unrelated businesses. But he takes his money and he puts that into the markets, long-term investing, because he's just trying to preserve and he's just trying to, let's say, keep up with inflation, maybe beat it by a bit. So he makes all his money in business and then he puts that where he believes will be good for a long period of time, okay? And the same with myself in that, I'm able to generate returns that, you know, that the reason why somebody would invest in a regional bank today is because they want to go and they want to put, let's say, $1,000 in and they want to turn that to $2,000. Or maybe they want to turn that to $5,000. But that's not the wisest thing to do right now. It's way too aggressive here. So you're going to be investing in a business. You can create a business today with that same money you were about to put into PacWest and you could have much higher returns, potentially. That's a whole different aside, but that, that's what I need to interject with. That's real financial education. I hope you appreciate that. If you did, slam that like button. If you hate me, hate my face, put that down uh, arrow too, down button if you want. Share your opinion, come on, let's go people. US federal and state officials are assessing whether market manipulation caused the recent volatility in banking shares. Are you kidding me? Is that what this is all about? Like, this is what I'm saying. They can say anything, oh, the SEC is going to get involved, the government's going to get involved, and nobody wants to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is debt.
is so aggressively high. At the same time, you had interest rates at rock bottom for so long. You don't think that creates excessive gambling? Are you serious? Look, short sellers raked in $380 million in paper profits on Thursday alone. Certainly. Certainly. Why? Because it's an easy one, isn't it? Look how unbelievable this has been. What do you think people are going to do? Of course, it's taking advantage of the situation. It adds to liquidity, to be honest with you. That's what short selling ultimately does. It adds to liquidity. You can, you know, I'm sure it could be used in nefarious ways, but generally it's not much of a big deal. Argentines pulled $1 billion from bank accounts in April rush. I just wanted to highlight the fact that you're seeing this everywhere. Deposits fell 6.7%. You could see the peso weakened 13% in April in parallel market amid 100% CPI. So people are saying, why am I keeping the banks are at risk? There's, they've got their own concerns here. And you could see for yourself that, of course, they're not going to keep it in. I mean, does that surprise anybody? Look, dollar deposits drop again. Look at that. Why would they? And people are concerned about this. They're saying, ah, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with it. I got enough problems as it is. I got 100% inflation. My currency's losing over here. I don't even want to keep it in the bank anymore. Okay? So you get that, even if it is US dollars. Okay? That's, that's the point here. So certainly um, you're looking at this right now at this time. What are people doing? Like, what are they actively engaging in? Well, I think it's pretty clear that they want to transfer their fiat currency into something of more value, real things, real businesses, precious metals, real estate, anything, okay? Anything right now at this time that's real. So is it a surprise to anybody to see something like this? I really don't think so. You got to know something, okay? In this video, Pillars of Prosperity, I covered what you can do as an individual. Take the actual steps. I was asked over and over and over and over again, what are the steps? What do I got to do? How can I actually improve my own situation? Pillars of Prosperity, check it out right here at this video. I'll see you there.